All right. We are now the proud owner of an Anderson RBM 2000 round baler pickup trailer thing. <laughs> and I no longer have to fight with that stupid front loader clamp spike fork thingamadoodle. Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we're going to do a bunch of contracts and sell our silage. That is the plan. Uh, a couple things to update you guys on. First of all, um, you can see that our oats are now growing. But I discovered after I left you in the last episode that I can't actually pick up stones um, on a seeded field. You have to do that before you seed the field. And I guess, you know, thinking about that after the fact, that does kind of make sense because... You'd kind of tear up the seeds, I guess. Uh, you know, if you did it afterwards, but it doesn't matter because the game wouldn't let me do it anyways. The good news, though, is if you look uh, at uh, the lower right-hand corner, I'm still going to get a 98% yield bonus on this field. So, you know, we're still going to get a nice yield from it, and it is what it is, and I'll know for next time. Uh, also, I, I, I also discovered that the rolling that we did, that's not the same kind of rolling that presses the seed down into the ground um you know that's more like for grass seed i guess the the kind of rolling that we did was actually more to prepare the seed bed and that's something i think that you're supposed to do before uh planting as well so you know we're learning and we're getting better at this game as time goes on and i have somebody glitched inside of my fertilizer spreader okay wonderful i hope you're having a good time in there as you can see, uh, we brought our combine home and I parked it in the corner and it's just going to sit there until it's time to harvest. And maybe we'll totally luck out and be able to, to get a header on sale by that time. If if not, you know, then we'll just lease one. Uh, so, yeah, we did that. Let's take a look at our silage bales here. They should be very close. Um, they are 97% fermented. Nice. Okay, so the plan then is for me to work on contracts. Uh, for the first part of the day and then later on in this in-game day we will go sell our silage and make ourselves a little bit of money um, the sale price for the silage is not uh, not terrible it's not the best it can be but it's not terrible either so if we if we go select silage here and then uh, we, we are in April so uh, you know it's dropping down but it's still not you know bottomed out it's sort of more or less in the middle so it's still not a terrible time to sell it and so yeah that's what we'll do looks like i what did i do yeah accidentally brought the help menu up okay so let's uh we got our tractor nice and clean so let's head on over to the shop here and see what contracts are available Uh, I am going to need to f refuel and repair my tractor here pretty soon. It's getting low again, but hopefully we can do any any contracts that come up using their equipment and not mine anyways. Well, at least for, for baling. If we get fertilizer contracts, we'll, we will use our own equipment because we have everything we need for that. All right, so we'll park the McCormick in here, hop out, and go run over and see what's available. And yeah, I know I don't need to actually come all the way to the shop for this, but on the other hand, if we're going to use their equipment, we do. So, but it's also kind of a role-playing thing, too. Uh, let's take a look at the, what's on sale today, by the way. Um, okay, so we got a John Deere. What's the horsepower? 130 horsepower, so that's probably... Uh, that might be a medium tractor. I'm not really sure, but not something we need at this point. This is a potato harvester. Definitely don't need that. This is a planter and we don't need that. And this is, looks, looks like maybe a large John Deere tractor, the 6R series. Oh man, it comes with 280 horse already. That's nice. Man, I wish we could buy that, but we do not have the dineros for that right now. Very nice tractor though. Um, you know, I know I could take a loan out, but I'm trying to avoid taking loans out as much as possible. I mean, we have the original $200,000 loan, which we still have out, and it cost me about 222 bucks a day on interest uh, for that loan. But 
I'm trying to, you know, do things without taking loans out uh, if we can if we can ma manage it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have for contracts. OK, so we got some bailing contracts. That doesn't surprise me because it's, you know, that time of year, I guess, for the first cutting. Uh, here's one for nine thousand. Um, what kind of equipment are you doing here? That's a silage one too. Definitely prefer the silage contracts just because they're a little more lucrative and a little less work. So, um, okay. So the largest one here is field eighteen. What are where's field eighteen? That's yeah, we've done that field before with our own equipment. It's not, it's kind of big, but it's not terribly big. Um, so we could use our own stuff for that. You know what I was kind of hoping for though is the the big uh, this field seventy one. That's that ginormous hay field that we did with the crone before. What we could maybe do is let's go back into the contracts, and I think what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and take all of these. But I'm not going to use their stuff because all of these I can use my own equipment on. And, you know, that'll save us not a ton of money, but some money, especially, you know, 400 bucks on that one. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to accept all of these bailing contracts. With, and, you know, plan to use our own equipment. I don't care about the weeding contracts, but let's go ahead now and do a clear. And then see if something oh here it is here it is look at that field 71 fantastic you guys all right and it, and it does come with the the crone swather and it looks like it looks like this might be a square bale one too nifty all right we are taking that and we're going to borrow their stuff to do it we also have a a fertilizer contract. We we take any and all fertilizer contracts because we're set up for it. They're really fast. It's just the easiest money in the world. And uh, you know what? Let's um let's clear and do another refresh. Okay, here's another fertilization. We'll take that and that and a nice twelve thousand dollar fertilization. And again, we're not using their equipment because we have our own stuff for that. Okay, so let's do a clear and then another refresh. Okay, that's a weeding. We don't care about that. Oh, more. Okay. Yeah. More of these. Oh man. Look at this. You guys, we're, we are going to have so much work here. This is wonderful. I love this refresh mod. There's another fertilizer. Okay. Those are weeding and another fertilizer and another fertilizer. <laughs> we're going to fertilize every doggone field in this whole Elm Creek. But you know, the way it works with, with better contracts, which is the mod I'm using is, um, it doesn't refresh until the next month and then it looks at all the fields in the current state they're in and what they need and then it kind of takes that into account which is somewhat realistic wow look at all this money you guys we are going to make some bank today that is awesome okay so it doesn't look like anything else is coming up here okay so yeah um so what the plan is is i'm going to start working on these contracts I probably, I might show you bits and pieces of them, especially, you know, maybe some of the square baling. Uh, because this is a square baler stacker. It's kind of like almost a harrow bed. Um, which my father informed me is Deborah spelled backwards. Um, he said that, I think New Holland, the guy that owned New Holland's daughter's name was Deborah. And he created the harrow bed, which is Deborah's name backwards, which is kind of some interesting trivia. This is like a monster baler here. So, yeah, that thing's going to obviously create large square bales. Look inside of it. That is nifty. And this is a, this must be a haying contract as opposed to a silage, which is kind of unfortunate. But that's okay. We got an enormous windrower here, so it won't take us long to windrow at all. And, you know, it looks like we have a really large tether too. So this is going to be fun. I'm very much looking forward to doing it. I, I love to use this crone, uh, you know, big swather thing in Madoodle. Okay, so we got that going on. And then, you know, like I said, for all the fertilizer contracts that we have, I'm just going to use my uh, my own equipment for that. And uh, I might be tempted. <laughs> I might be tempted to borrow the crone for the hay contract. 
the other aid contracts too. But if we do that, you guys got to promise you won't tell the owner of the crone that we used his stuff for somebody else's field. Okay, we'll just keep that between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys and me. Anyways, all right, guys. So, yeah, I think the plan is, like I said, I'll, I'll uh, record bits and pieces of doing these contracts and just put them all together in just a single montage for you uh, with some cool country music. And I hope you guys have been enjoying the music, you know, uh, on the channel. I sure, I, I really like uh, the country music selection that is available to me from Epidemic Sound. I have mentioned this before, but if you guys hear me uh, use a song in the video in one of the montages that you really like. I always put the links to those songs in the description of the video, so that way you can listen to it again later if you want to. All right, you guys. Well, um, you will see me in just a few seconds with a lot more money than I currently have. I will see you in several hours from now. <laughs> this is going to take a while, but we're going to make some good money. Okay, so catch you guys in a bit.
All right, guys, we are back and uh, we finished our hay baling. We still have all the silage to do. Uh, I have $101,600 from doing just the hay alone, which is fantastic because we started out with 50 something. So we've almost doubled our money. Haven't done any of the fertilizer contracts yet and haven't finished the silage contracts. So I think, you know, I've been wanting this for a long time. I don't want to take the time to have to manually load all the silage bales from the four more fields or so that we have to do. Uh, I did fudge a little bit and use the, the crone to mow that hay, but I haven't done anything else with it. And I went ahead and turned in um, the uh, the quest for, for the hay, uh, you know, to get the money and all of that equipment went back to the owner. So um, I think we're going to buy this. I think we're just going to do it. I've been wanting to for a while and uh, we're just going to do it. So let's get her done. All right, we are now the proud owner of an Anderson RBM 2000 round baler pickup trailer thing. <laughs> and I no longer have to fight with that stupid front loader clamp spike fork thingamadoodle. Um, you know, the last time I used that to load my own silage bales, which reminds me, we should go see if those are ready to sell. Um... I had a lot of trouble with it, with it just being glitchy. It wasn't even me being a noob. It was just being glitchy. And I cut most of that out of the video because the video was already being too long anyways. So yeah, uh, we're going to finish um, the rest of our silage contracts now uh, with our shiny new trailer. I'm so happy to have this now. It's just going to make life way better for us. Moving forward when it comes to loading round bales. I really loved the the square bales, the square baler, the square baler pickup. And, you know, someday we'll get that stuff. But it's just, it's really expensive. Um, you know, the round round baling equipment is, is more affordable than the square baling stuff is at this point. So that's why we are, are doing this. Uh, so let's go back to our, our farm. And we're going to actually go around this way. And check our own silage bales and see if they happen to be ready. If they are, let's go sell those now and make that money. If they're not, then of course we'll just uh, continue working the silage, the rest of the silage contracts with our own equipment. I need, I do need to get some gasoline in our, our little tractor here uh, pretty soon too. That JCB tractor that I was using, that thing was amazing. Uh, I, have, I have to see how much that thing costs, but it went 40 miles an hour first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just had lots of power and I really liked that tractor. So that was cool. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and pull this around to here. And I think we're here. Let's just hop out and look at our silage bales. Um, okay. Yeah. So these have all turned to silage. So what we're going to do is drop off um, our new trail. Uh, yeah, those are already loaded. Let's just mess with them one one final time. Um, so I'm just going to drop this off right here because we're going to come back and pick it up later to finish the contracts. And we'll hook up to you. Well, actually, before we hook up to you, we need to go get our, our front loader hooked up so we can offload these bales. Okay, we need to check the prices to see who's got the best price today. Uh, let's see. We want to go here and we want to select silage and it looks like the animal dealer currently has the best price and it's actually going up. Interesting. So we're in April. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get a little bit of money from these. We're certainly not going to make, make us super filthy rich, but we'll get some money from them. Whether or not we ultimately prof profited you know, if you take into account all the work that I put into the field and leasing the equipment, I don't know. Um, I'm not. I'm not really sure if uh, how that turns out. It's something I kind of guess I want to pay attention to, but it's like I said before. That's a little bit dependent upon the circumstances, the size of the field, that sort of thing. 
But, you know, as time goes on, hopefully we'll be leasing less and less anyways. Let's let this guy go through here. Okay. So we're going to head to the animal dealer and offload these silage bales and make ourselves a little more money. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I forgot to put a, uh, a weight on the back of this. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Can I kind of keep them? Uh. All right, we better do one at a time. Didn't even think about that, of course. Part of it's that we were also going downhill, though, too, so... Yeah, see these these clamp thingies, they they're just really weird, really glitchy. The one on the left seems to always clip into the bale. Just having that problem, you know, with them before too. This is a mod too, by the way, so I don't know, maybe the mod's not quite set up right or something. There we go. Okay, so we're at 67,000. We started at 51.1. So we'll just say 51. So we made about $16,000 off of that silage. Um, if we do this. Uh, what did we, Okay, so what all did we have to lease to make all that work? We had to lease a plow. And we leased this one here. So that costs us 816. I'm gonna I'm just gonna see if we actually made a profit here. Okay, so that's 816. Let's see, what else did we lease? We leased the uh, lime spreader. And that was twenty two ninety five. Okay. Um, we had to lease the cedar to plant it, so that was seventeen oh eight. And I think we leased the roller that was 2009 or 2091 rather and this we for that uh, particular field prep we also lease the stone picker uh where are those at stone pickers right here we lease this this one that was 1275 Okay, and then um, we bought some seed, but we only used, I mean, I don't even, maybe 20% of that, of the seed bag that we bought. So seeds. So that's 800 bucks. So we'll just say another 200 bucks for seed. And I think, I think that's everything. Uh, fertilizer. Did we fertilize that field? I don't remember if we did or not. Because I think it was half fertilized already or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember if we fertilized it or not. So, uh, assuming we didn't, that comes out to $8,385. So, let's just say $800, $1,600. So, we made about, uh, or I'm sorry, $8,000. Three, so we made about seventy six, about seventy six hundred bucks 
profit. Unless I also fertilize, and I just don't remember if we did or not. So we definitely made a profit, even from, you know, leasing that equipment. Uh, so that's good to know. Definitely good to know, in fact. Okay, cool. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the ranch. And we're going to um, finish our silage contracts using our own equipment. And get those done, and then that we'll see where that puts us. Uh, I still have all those fertilizer contracts too, but I'm, I'm not gonna. I don't even think I'm gonna montage that for you guys, because I mean you've seen, you've seen me spread fertilizer multiple times now, and it's just going over the field with the spreader and spreading fertilizer. So I'll probably do all of that off camera, uh, but I will bring you back when I'm completely done with all of those, just so we see what the final um, profit is, or the final amount of money, I guess I should say, that we will make off of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get busy uh, with these silage contracts that we have.
All right, guys, we are up to $104,616, and all of the rest of the bales that are left up in the fields up above here are ours, free and clear. So let's go grab those. We'll get those sold, and then uh, then we're going to be doing fertilizer contracts. We've got a whole bunch of those, and that's just going to be easy-peasy money. Uh, this has been a good day for us, man. We have really made some good money. Remember, too, we spent 50 some odd thousand dollars on this absolutely sent from God trailer. <laughs> it's so nice to use this to pick up those bales after fussing with the front loader and the, you know, the, uh, the bale spikes and the clamps and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I am so uh, thrilled that we got this trailer. I uh, don't regret it at all. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, everything we sell from what's left up here is pure uh, profit for us. And then of course, you know, with the fertilizer contracts, I do have to buy the fertilizer, but we're still going to make a pretty nice little decent chunk of change uh, from that too. So let's grab these bills, take them back to the biogas factory and drop them off. Um, actually, we should check and see if the animal uh, animal dealer is still uh, providing a better price. I don't know if they are or not. Uh, but what do we got here? Four, yeah, 450 centimeter bales that are all ours. This is amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's pick these guys up first. And then we'll check the the prices and see if it's animal dealer or biogas. I had to take these to the biogas because that's what the contract wanted me to do. But that doesn't necessarily mean the biogas is still uh, or is given the best price. Oh, nice. We got two more bales down there, too. Even better. Even better. There's some pretty decent money in, in silage, man. Pretty decent money. All right, that's all ours, baby. Okay, let's take a look and see uh, what the prices are saying for silage. Show current prices. So animal dealer is going down, but they're still the better, the better deal here. So let's go on over to the animal dealer and sell these off and add to our bottom line. Can I run over this crow? Nope. <laughs> All right, add another almost $6,000 to our total there. Uh, we do need gas, and we do need to repair. Uh, so that's going to definitely take some money back away, but it's got to get done, of course. Not to worry about the fuel, but the repair is going to be pretty darn expensive, I think. Is that going to fold up? Yep, cool. Okay. So, yeah, so right now, guys, we're sitting at $110,597. Uh, so I will, I'm going to go hook up the fertilizer spreader. So I'm by the gas station, get some gas. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe, um, I'm thinking about maybe running the tractor all the way down in terms of the repair and see if it still functions. I don't know if it'll completely stop, and if it does, then what do we do? <laughs> uh, or if it just keeps working, but it just, you know, works less efficiently. I mean, I can already tell it's, you know, it doesn't seem to have as quite as much power as it normally does. I was really struggling with the baler in particular on that one field that was kind of, you know, hilly. So, but more just for curiosity than anything, I, I just want to know if it'll keep running if it breaks all the way down. Well, I don't know if breakdown is the right word, but if the repair meter goes all the way down. Um, I'd like to know that because, you know, then we could kind of plan accordingly. In a, you know, But I will repair it um, even after I find out what it, what it does. But I'm just curious, you know, to see what it does. So um, can we pull in here and get some gas? Should be able to. All right, is the gas menu refuel? Press R. Okay, so we'll see how much this costs. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how much bank we've made today. 
you know, we, we've made about 110,000. Right, because I spent 50 some odd on the trailer, so that would bring us up to 160,000, and we started with 50,000 ish. So, yeah, we, we've already made $110,000 today, you guys, and we're not done. We haven't even started the fertilizer contract. So that's awesome. That's that's just a rough estimate, of course. Not an exact dot of figures, but close enough. Close enough to know that this is a very good day. So, yeah, um, I think I'm going to cut the camera here and get working on those fertilizer contracts. And uh, I will bring you back when we're completely finished with those. It shouldn't take me too terribly long to do them because I can really knock those out pretty quickly. And uh, then I'll bring you back at that point. We'll see how much money we finally made. And then we'll wrap up the episode. So I'll see you guys in just a bit here. All right, guys, we are done. And we are sitting at $136,887. Um, it took me about seven and a half. Yeah, about seven and a half bags of fertilizer to do all of those contracts. Um, so if we... Thirty-six, eighty-eight, seven, and each one is eight about eighteen hundred dollars each bag. So eighteen times seven point five, twenty-one thousand. So, so we yeah so we grossed about a hundred and fifty-seven hundred fifty-eight thousand uh, dollars, but of course we have to subtract the fertilizer so. We are netting today twenty th about we made about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars today ish. Again, those are very rough estimates, but they, you know, they're in the ballpark, I think. So good day, man! Wow, I, it took me a long time, you guys. It took me an entire Sunday afternoon here on the week on the weekend to do all of those contracts, but I sure had a good time, and I'm I'm thrilled, you know, that we have made as much money as, as we've made. Um, so my tractor doesn't seem to have gone down any further than what it was when we started the fertilizer contract. So I'm going to say it will continue to function even when, you know, the, the repair is all the way down, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I guess, but I mean, that's, guess that's the way the game works. I am going to repair it though, just because, you know, we're trying to be somewhat realistic here in this, um, in this series. Uh, so we will repair it, and of course that's going to take a good chunk of change, probably at least ten grand uh, to do. I'm thinking, uh, but let's clean off our wonderful fertilizer spreader. Man, this thing is paid for itself already, probably a couple of times over now. Uh, so super good investment there for sure uh, to do all these fert contracts. And uh, you know we we made a nice nice chunk of change doing the baling uh, contracts too. Uh, particularly with the silage, but we didn't do too bad with the hay either. So, yeah, pretty happy with the way today turned out. So, most likely what's going to happen is I'm just going to sleep through April 2nd and 3rd because, I, you know, no new contracts typically will come up um, after I've, you know, done the first batch of them for, for the month. And then uh, let's take a look at our calendar here. So, our oats... Yeah, we still have we still have two more months. We have May and June before we can even harvest the oats. So we're just gonna let the oats do their thing. They're pretty much in as good a shape as they can be in. We have a 98% yield bonus only because I couldn't get those stupid rocks off of there, but it's all right. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the one thing though that I do have to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do is uh, if we go here. We really need to kind of hang on to the oats once we get them until December if we want to get the best price. And I don't have currently a way to store them. So that means, I mean, I don't know how many oats we're going to get off of this field. It took several trailer loads of sugar beets. Of course, you know, those are sugar beets on the original sized field. I think it was four or five of our current trailer. 
So we kind of need a silo, I think. I mean, I, again, I just don't know how how many oats we're going to get off of here. If I, if I knew we could store them in probably two trailers, I'd go buy a second trailer because, you know, there's no harm in having a second one of those trailers, but... I don't know. Here, Here's what's kind of in my mind. I am thinking, guys, about buying the Elm Street Farm. Now, uh, I mentioned this a, a few episodes ago, but in case you didn't catch that... Uh, what is this crop, by the way? That's cotton. Okay. So, um... If you start the game on easy mode, you you start with this farm, you own this farm and you, you know, and it's yours. So, it's kind of meant for the player anyway. So, let's see how much does it cost? Let's look at the map. I think it's 150 some odd thousand bucks. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's $156,000. And it's right, you know, it's adjacent to our current farm and it and, you know, it's got a barn and a shed. I would have considered hanging on to the extra hay and even the silage that we got if I would have had a place to store those. But, of course, I, I don't. And the hay in particular, you know, I don't want to store that outside because it could get rained on. Uh, but over here, you know, we've got a nice barn and a shed. The land already comes with that. Uh, it comes with three small fields. Uh, this one, of course, has cotton on it. What's this? This is wheat. Okay, so we got wheat on that field. What do we have on this back field? We have uh, barley. Okay, so we have barley grown there. And um, this building, I don't think this building's functional, but the barn is. I mean, we could, we could actually use the barn. We could, we could park you know our smaller implements in here it's really kind of a cool barn and it's got like a lower area that you can go down uh i don't know if you can open those doors if you could that'd be great because you know then we could pull stuff into here too but there's like a little workshop back here i don't know if this is just uh eye candy or if it's actually f functional oh look at that you can lift that up can we, can we put it in place I'm knocking everything off the table. Almost got it. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so it's got a cool little workshop in it. And then we have, like I said, we have a shed over here that we could... Uh, w this was actually, if you guys remember, we actually stayed in the attic of this shed very early on like in our second episode because we you know this is mama joe's place who owns the diner there i know i haven't been doing a whole lot of role playing lately but that's okay we'll we'll still do a little bit of that here and there so this isn't really about role play so much as it is about just you know me learning the game for the first season and you know there's like a couple little pits down here you can go in to work on your machinery and things it's pretty neat though but we would have you know some places we could store stuff and then there's room over here. I think if you if you start the game on easy mode, I think it comes with a farmhouse that is actually right over in this area some somewhere. So yeah, I'm uh I'm considering that. And the reason uh, all that to say, I think we're gonna need to consider getting a silo. But I don't want to put a silo on our current land because there's just no room for it. You know. Um, there's just no room on that land for me to add anything more like that. But there would be room here. I, I think, I'm not positive too, but I think maybe if you start in easy mode, there's already a silo right in this area here, perhaps. And let's see, what are what are we talking about in terms of cost? So if we go to uh, silos. Oh my goodness, those are expensive. Oh, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Lord. Um... Yeah, they are really expensive. Oh my goodness. Okay. The cheapest silo is $72,000. This guy here. Wow. $72,000. My word. Holds 980,000 liters of whatever. Okay. Um, We might... Okay, how much does it cost? 
how much would it cost for me to get another trailer? Uh, let's see. Forage wagons. Trailers are right up here. So we currently have a Rudolph. Uh, I think we have this trailer, this trailer here. Is it that one or is it the other one? I don't know. I'd have to look. <laughs> Excuse me. Good. Zoom tight. Actually, you know what? I think this is the trailer that we have. The TDK 301 RA. Um, yeah, we have the TDK 301 RA. Okay, so for us to buy, uh, whoops, another trailer. If we, you know, if we got the same one, which I kind of would like to. Oh boy, we have um. You know, that would cost us thirty-two thousand. We could buy we could buy two and a half ish <laughs> more of these for the same cost as that silo, that cheapest silo. And then, you know, that way we have kind of a mobile storage. Because we wouldn't I don't I can't think of why we would need that trailer for anything else after we harvest our oats until, you know, it came time to sell the oats. So I guess that's something to think about too. Um, I don't know, but I, I'd like I'd like a nicer farm though. So that's another reason why it would be kind of nice to to get this place. And you know, we still have two, at least two. We could have, if we wanted to, we could have up to four months uh, calendar. We don't actually have to, have to harvest the oats till the very, you know, till the end of August. So that would give us four months to work contracts and whatever, you know, to, to raise the money to not only buy this place, but then maybe buy that silo then too. So that's kind of what's in my mind right now, guys. And then, you know, once we, once we do buy this place, you know, as time goes on, we could just continue to expand out and start, you know, buying up these fields and maybe even eventually the, the coolest hay field in the whole world, <laughs> well, on the whole map anyways you know, as we expand and, and maybe branch out to here. And yeah, so, so there's lots of cool possibilities there. So anyway, I think that is it for this episode. I'm going to edit it down. So, you know, it's more or less the normal length for you guys, but man, I've been spending hours recording today. So, but I've had a good time too. Lots of fun. Just enjoying this game thoroughly. So with that, you guys, I'm gonna let you go here. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Did you enjoy this episode? I don't think you did. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. And we will catch you in the next episode. Maybe we could put a silo over here. But no, I don't want to. I don't want to do anything more on this land. Okay, bye.